And guys, what is up, everybody? It's your boy Ooch. We're back again, once again, uh, for another special Pirates Academia. But I, I don't think it's ever been this special before, because for the very first time, we have a guest. And you're, normally, you guys are used to us, you know, like just having, um, just the three of us with Isaac myself and technique but for the first time ever for this mentor tier list we're going to have david fielding himself aka zordon the mentor of mentors all right <laughs> on the stream first and foremost um so yeah like this is this is this is in, insane to even even say but it is it is really happening i i definitely had to pinch myself a few times but uh we are here now let me actually um, switch over to the Zoom call so that you guys can see what I see. Um, and yes, David, welcome. How you doing, sir? I am good. I am good. Glad to be here. Glad to be uh, uh, part of the stream and uh, talk to you guys about uh, Power Rangers and Battle for the Grid. It's going to be awesome. Yes. Yeah, so, like I said, um, first time we've ever had any any sort of guest and this is pretty pretty huge for everyone especially like not even just for the battle for the great community but for you know power rangers in general um so so really quick guys for in the chat uh we're gonna just obviously be talking uh with david about himself and you know things relating to power rangers obviously but so david we'll start I'll ask by saying, you know, like, feel free to let us know, like, where you're from and, you know, your origins with, with your acting career and whatnot, and feel free to, like, go as far as you'd like to with that. Well, my origin story? Is it <laughs> <laughs> Definitely the origin story, yeah, yes. Sure, origin story. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I was born on a distant planet. No. Um, <laughs> uh, kind of, you know, just like a regular person. I mean, my father was in the Air Force, and uh, so uh, after myself and my brother and sister were born, we, we traveled around a lot uh, from community to community uh, all around the United States and uh, uh, settled in Texas, and uh, I finished high school there, uh, got my undergraduate uh, acting theater degree at Southwest Texas State University in San Marcos, Texas. Uh, went to uh, graduate school and got my Master of Fine Arts in Acting from the University of Pittsburgh and then went out to Los Angeles. And uh, while in Los Angeles, I got to audition for this little tiny show um, that ended up uh, kind of changing the world. So there you go. <laughs> that's, that's my origin story. <laughs> that's perfect. That is awesome. Yeah, that tiny show turned out to be a pretty – pretty big deal if you if i don't say, if i do say so myself yeah uh, is if everybody can hear me is it is the volume correct i mean i i see the there's some chat in there about people saying it's hard to hear me or whatever so yeah so i turned it's I, better now yeah i turned i turned it up a little bit um just to make sure uh if you if you have any like extra volume on your end to turn up definitely do so if you if if you do but I turned I turned uh, up everything so just to just to be safe here. So I mean that's really cool though. That 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 is a pretty pretty nice origin story. Um, so like aside from uh, you know the obvious Power Rangers, like what other what other roles have have you done? Um, for film and TV, uh, nothing uh, of note. Uh, uh, I, I did have a small bit part in a Jean-Claude Van Damme movie that ended up on the cutting room floor, but uh, uh, Power Rangers is really sort of like my first and only like screen credit. Uh, I did a lot of uh, stage and uh, live theater, uh, and I also did quite a bit of voice acting for video games. So... Um, mm -hmm. Uh, people probably have heard me in a lot of early uh, mid to early 2000s video games for for the PC. Uh, so, you know, they, they might have encountered my voice uh, if they played those types of games. So 
That's pretty cool. Like what what, what, kind, really of, cool. what kind of games have you uh have you voiced for? Like on uh, the when, when I left Los Angeles, I moved back uh, to Pennsylvania and I worked with a small video company called Dreamforge Entertainment and they did a bunch of gold box uh D D PC games. So uh, I got to do the voice for Dritz de Orden, the the black elf uh, for the Forgotten Realms. I got to do his voice. I got to do uh an evil doctor for a very psychologically uh, psychological thriller game called Sanitarium with those guys. Nice. Uh, I did voices for a real time strategy game called um, Warwind, uh, and also voices for their other RPG game called Anvil of Dawn. And then uh, from there, I moved uh, just outside of Boston and went to work for Impressions Games, who did a bunch of city builders like Zeus and Poseidon and Caesar three. And I did voices for those games. Uh, and then I got into doing, uh, in addition to doing voices, I was doing QA work. I was working on the games and uh, finding bugs and writing up bug reports and helping to uh, mold the, the flow of the games. And then uh, I worked for a company called uh, Stainless Steel Studios uh, for a real-time strategy game called Empire Earth. And I did like 99% of the, of the unit voices in that game. Uh, and then I was hired by uh, another outfit called Mad, Mad Doc Software and did a lot of voice work and a lot of design work uh, for the games that they built. Uh, so yeah, I was involved in the video game industry for a little over a decade doing that kind of stuff. And then uh, uh, left Massachusetts, came back uh, down south and started concentrating on my writing career. So that's basically what I'm doing now. Wow. So he's done it all. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. actually oh my goodness. goodness. <laughs> so you so really, you, you've been, you've been very like busy and active and like, that's a lot, that's a lot of video game work for sure. And I, I mean, that's, that's, that's really cool. I'll, I'll definitely, definitely got to, got to, tip my hat off to you on that and well, a lot of those old games are available on uh, good old games you can uh, you can mm -hmm. purchase them and download them and play them on your computer so nice that's really neat what what's your what, so, so what's your i gotta ask what's your what's your favorite role overall then ben since you you had all this video game um experience and you know the your 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 acting and then obviously with power Rangers. uh well my i guess my favorite role is uh but whatever it is that I'm currently working on is my favorite. I mean, uh, That's fair. It, it, it's it's hard not to deny uh, the impact of uh, the character of Zordon. I mean, it's it's for something that I did uh, such a long time ago. Uh, it's it's enabled me to sort of uh, have some experiences that I might not have been able to do uh, without it. Uh, uh, as far as like travel outside the country and to meet people in other parts of the world and uh, uh, share with them their experiences about what, what the show meant, meant to them and, and that sort of thing and sort of uh, widen my vision and, and my experience about uh, this crazy thing we called life and uh, uh, just really uh, I'm very appreciative that, that I was in the right place at the right time uh, to be a part of that um, and to know the the legacy of the Sentai and, and how it folds into that and and uh, you know being a part of that family is is uh, something you know I'm I'm very humbled to be a part of and, and very proud to be an ambassador for so I mean that's great yeah that that is, that is really awesome like wow like that <laughs> I'm sorry that is really that is really that is really cool um so yeah speaking speaking of which right so you did mention the sentai and that's actually something that i i literally almost forgot to even uh have prepared to ask you but like how how like uh how informed were you and like the other actors that were a part of mighty Morphin back in the day like how how informed were you guys on the the super sentai counterparts to power rangers um well i, I mean i can't speak for the other actors because mm -hmm. uh our time together uh 
when I filmed my my portion of the show was very very brief. Oh, wow. uh, so I I did not spend a lot of time with the original cast uh, with them. So I, I didn't really get to know them well or know uh, what their experience was. Myself, uh, I had grown up, uh, you know, watching stuff like uh, Ultraman and. Uh, all the Godzilla movies and Spectre Man and Battle for the Planets. So I, I was very familiar with, with anime and Sentai kind of stuff. So right. when uh, they told me what the show was and what they were doing, I was like going, I, can, I understand that completely. I know what you're doing. Uh, <laughs> and so I was, I was very excited that I was going to be a part of this uh, Japanese-American hybrid that would have these giant robots and big rubber monsters and... Uh, I was just giddy about the whole thing. And I was even more uh, excited about the fact that uh, we were sort of like part of this power hour of Power Rangers and the X-Men cartoon. We went back to back. And so, uh, you know, because for me, I was like, well, I'm the Professor X of Power Rangers. And there's yes. Professor X of X-Men. And, and so I, I, I kind of felt <laughs> or kind of created this fiction in my head that, yeah, yeah, we're 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 buddies with Marvel, so <laughs> that was kind of my thing. And uh, so uh, they did not have to give me any sort of like really in depth explanation about it. As soon as they mentioned what it was, like, oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. And uh, so we just jumped off from there. And uh, uh, seeing the footage being put together, and you know, watching the transformation and the practical effects of all of the zords you know and stuff i was like this is freaking awesome uh of course i didn't realize at the time that it would last anything longer than a season i thought it was just going to be a um a small show that might run one or two years and then uh people would forget about it because that's kind of how saturday morning cartoons were for me when i was growing up there would be every year there would be like a new sid and marty croft show and they would play for about a year and then it would get replaced by something else so uh we didn't have social media back then there was no internet back then there was no sort of like vi this thing is going to go viral there, there was nothing like that back then um so from our perspective it was or at least from my perspective it was like well this is a job and uh there's no telling how long it's going to last it may last six episodes 16 episodes but here we are what over a thousand i think now a thousand episodes yeah, or something like that yeah. uh so uh yeah i mean i understood exactly what they what it was that they wanted from the get-go i just didn't understand at the time that it was going to be monster big you know what i mean yeah no like i i honestly i don't i don't even think they they knew because um, no I, I don't know if you're familiar with the toys that made us on Netflix. Have oh, you... yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I had actually spoken with them um, about possibly being on the show. But because my character was not large enough, because my character did not have a toy, uh, there was nothing for them to really talk to me about on the show. But um, I think I think Heim Saban and the guys who were putting the uh, show together, I think they understood uh, what they had on their hands as far as the merchandise was concerned. Um, uh, I, I think they knew right from the start that they were going to blow things out of the water with that. Um, but of course, you know, when, when you're working on the show, you're, you're too close to uh, the material right in front of you and you really can't see uh, the long road or, or the big picture of stuff. Uh, so uh, I think they knew what they had. Uh, they just kind of kept it really close to the chest until after that first half a season or whatever, and then just exploded all over the place. I can tell you. Speaking okay. of toy, yeah. I just have to say this real quick. Go ahead. We finally got a Zordon toy, oh, but yeah. they did not do the oh. character justice. <laughs> Come on. Well, they came out with the lightning, you know, the lightning uh, Zordon Coaching. and Alpha finally. But then we saw the Zordon. There was still so much left to be desired. Like, oh, I, I, I had my I had my fingers crossed, and I'm hoping that they'll do the Boom Studios uh, <laughs> Zordon with the body. Oh, yes, Are you found the Boom Studios as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, so at least my character will have 60 points of articulation and that sort of thing, <laughs> <laughs> rather than just a face. Yeah, I I was you know this is great because you know this is. 
We're, we're, we're literally going from, we're, we're transitioning into a bunch of different topics that I, yeah. I, I'm loving to talk with you about more because like to go, to quickly go back on what you were mentioning about how like you didn't have a toy back in the day. And, and, and I, I, I can't even believe I, I heard you utter the words, my character wasn't that big because in, in, as, like, yep, and, and yep. I'm, I'm speaking as a, as a fan right now. Okay. You were, you were probably one of the most like biggest deals in like in the history of history all right as as a young as a young boy back in the day watching power rangers grew up watching power rangers of course and you know i'm here today and you know i have i have what i have in this community which i'm i'm super grateful for but all, dating back to then like even now like the character of zordon is still like spoken about talked about and i feel like the character has has only gotten that much better and we're always reminding people that they don't necessarily remember it you know like they did as 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 kids like you know Zordon lasted throughout basically like they they called they called it an era named off of your character the Zordon yeah. era <laughs> so like I don't know like to me that like you're you're definitely way more than just like I, like they they missed it, it let's just say this they, it's a missed opportunity obviously we can't go back in time and 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 get you those toys that you definitely deserve because how come they could have never just made a huge globe with your head in it and then just sold that as it is and I definitely would have been like that would have been like something you put on a pedestal and when you walk into your house you're like okay what's up Zordon you like bow or something and like so I, I think they kind of touched about it. I touched on it in the, the toys that made us in the fact that uh, what what Heim Saban and them capitalized on the fact was that those toys were already in production. Right. Yeah. They, they already mm -hmm. had a warehouse full of figures ready to go. They just needed the show to air and then boom, those stuff was going to be in the stores. And since Zordon was a completely American invention yeah. for, for mm -hmm. Power Rangers, he's, he's not in the Sentai. There was no toy for him. There was there was no reference material for them to sort of exploit. You know what I mean? So, um, uh, I mean, they, they did have the Power Dome set that, that you could buy uh, that had like a, a very bad image of my face uh, stuck to the back of, of the thing. And, you know, you, it had like a little microphone and you could pretend to be Zordon's voice. Um, that was like really the only Zordon toy that they had for like the longest time That's and um uh, and of course and again it, you know the the character is is larger than life but he's also very limited in the fact that he is just a uh giant floating head <laughs> with no real sort of um something that you can pick up and and play around with i mean he's um he's very awesome and 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 uh like i said he's you know he's larger than life mm -hmm. but what what do you do with that other than just sort of like a static image and if you watch the show in in later seasons of the zordon era that's basically what he becomes he, he becomes very static he doesn't move very much uh, uh the the footage that they recycled over and over of my face uh became just sort of like a um a kind of a prop kind of thing uh and and i i do think there was a missed opportunity for them story-wise absolutely to uh have uh used the character more but on the on the other hand it, zordon is a very unique mentor in the in the fact that um if you look at other superhero teams if you look at other um franchises uh like the teenage mutant ninja turtles with splinter or uh, the, you know, Professor X with the X Men and that sort of thing. Zordon is a very hands-off mentor. He do, he mm. never intervenes. He does not. Yeah. Uh, he, he does not take over the fight for them at some point. He is a very um, encouraging, um, supportive uh, figure. Yeah. But I mean, and I think that's a that's a big lesson that really impacted kids back then was that here was somebody who just believed in them. And uh, I think that's really important for a lot of kids who uh, who are watching the show at the time and might have been latchkey kids who came home to an empty house because both of their parents were, were working or 
Um, you know, they might have come from a broken home because of certain circumstances or uh, they, they had really tough times at school. You know, I've had so many people talk to me about how they were bullied at school and they would come home and Power Rangers was there for them. And so here's this character. Here's this big face that's basically saying, I know you can do this. I know that you can get through this and I am right here with you and I, 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 I believe in you. And I, so I think that's that's the main thing that gives the character the staying power that it has. Right. At, at least for me, anyway. No, I, I definitely think you 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 hit the nail right on the head. That's, oh, yeah. That's, that's deep. That's so true and very deep, for sure. Yeah, like, and like you said, like, you know, with these missed opportunities, but the funny thing is, you know, with missed opportunities, there's always more opportunities. And you did mention Boom Studios. Now, I'm not sure if you follow the comic books, but I could tell you right now that the story of Power Rangers as we know it today, like they've been doing such a great job at Boom Studios. Like I'm almost wanting to just straight up forget about what I grew up watching as a kid because the story that they're writing in the comic books has ha they they've elaborated and expanded upon so many different things including your character like zordon isn't just you know a floating head that's you know providing mentorship and um and guidance and support like you said like there is a backstory to zordon now where he was you know on eltar and 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 has connections with other characters from the series that we are already familiar with don't worry, I'm not going to spoil it for anyone in the chat, but just know that it's the story that Zordon has in the comic books adds so many more layers to the overall story of Power Rangers that I feel like that would most certainly not even to say rejuvenate to say like, oh, it's like Zordon needs to be rejuvenated. But like it, like I said, it just adds way more layers to that. And like, so I, I just wanted to know, like, um, you know, are are you aware of this? And if if not, or if so, like, what are what are your thoughts about that? Oh yeah, I'm I'm very aware. I mean, I I, <laughs> uh, I I've read Shattered Grid. I've talked with Kyle Higgins. I've, I've talked nice. with Ryan Parrott, and and uh, I'm very familiar with the comics. I I haven't read uh, a lot of what Ryan's been doing as far as like the Zordon character in the background. I I I, I don't live anywhere near where a comic book store is, so I can't pick up those issues or mm. whatever. So, uh, and because I'm busy uh, working on my own stuff, uh, it never occurs to me that I should go look that up or whatever. But uh, I mean, that's great that they're doing that. I mean, I, the only backstory I had <laughs> when I was on the show was like, uh, so, you know, what's my motivation? And it's like, well, you're a 10,000 year old wizard and you're stuck in a time warp, go. <laughs> and that was basically it. And, uh, you know, the lines that I was re recording in, in, the, in the studio at the time were, were basically just, lines of exposition about this is what the monster is, what their power is and how they're dangerous and be careful and all that kind of stuff. But um, there wasn't a whole lot of, uh, let's, you know, what are, what are Zordon's worries from day to day? They, they didn't get into that, any of that stuff. Right. Um, uh, so I'm, I'm really glad that uh, all that stuff is being expanded. And, and I do hope that uh, Hasbro, uh, uh, understands what they have in their hands mm -hmm. and that they, they, uh, that they do something very exciting with it. I mean, I, I would love for them to do an animated version of oh. the show and, and bring all the original cat, cast back to do voices for it. But, uh, you know, I don't know what the cost to produce something like that would be or if they're even considering that sort of thing. But um, uh, who knows? I mean, uh, I, I, I do think the comics have injected a, a, a very healthy dose of new life to the franchise, and right. that's very cool. Oh yeah, and and honestly, I could, I could tell you this right now: the, the you, you, what you're saying right now, I will I'll add is music to all of our ears because <laughs> this is th these are constant conversations we're having. Yes. Like they yes, should yes, yes. they should be doing an animated series we the whole like we are worried like we hope that hasbro understands what they have on in their hands right now and as far as like you know budgeting and stuff like that like we've actually you know been keeping a close eye to a couple of things and one in particular are you know the comics and 
they they are releasing some like deluxe edition off of like Kickstarter or something like that, mm -hmm. and and their goal was like. Yeah, I, I told Karen Ashley to get me a copy of those because those are gorgeous. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I, I totally. I, I wish I was one of the contributors, but when I want, when I saw the price on the full set, I was like, I definitely can't afford <laughs> this. But they look amazing, and I, and I totally hope to to get them in the future. But you know, bringing that up, you know, they they completely shattered the goal, yeah. and just to just to use that as a like as like a measuring stick as to how popular Power Rangers, even in this new kind of life that is being breathed in has, you know, like they're, they're basically re-releasing like the first 53 issues in these nice hardcover sets and at, you know, at a pretty, pretty uh, big price, but even, even so yeah. they have so much support and backing from the fans overall that they have way more than what they asked for as far as budgeting. So, I mean, I bring this up because, you know, just like you said, like, I, I, I hope that they do, you know, utilize, the, the the fact that they're they do have the support of the fans still to this day and we as fans definitely want to see um a lot more and 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 there's a lot of potential but you know it is definitely um in in hasbro's hands so i'm 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 hoping as well yeah i mean uh, as far as like the the size of the power rangers community i mean i forget who said it but if you if you look at any pop culture convention uh, here in the United States or uh, around the world, you're going to find three different franchises that all, are always there. There's Star Wars, there's Star Trek, and then there's Power Rangers. They're sort of like, you know, the big three, and they're always represented. There's always somebody cosplaying a, a, a character from, from one of those shows. And, you know, you can't walk through... Uh, a convention hall without seeing somebody dressed as the red ranger or the green ranger or uh uh you know just wearing some sort of power rangers type uh outfit and it's it's big it's you know it's it's <laughs> you can't get away from it it's always gonna be there <laughs> yeah absolutely so 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 let's talk a little bit about you know battle for the grid right so yeah. You have you obviously are reprising your role as Zordon in the game. So like, what what was that process like? Like, how did they how did they approach you? And like, how how did the whole um, you know flow of getting those lines recorded and whatnot? How did that go uh, with you? Well, um, I had uh, I can't remember how it worked out. Uh, I know that when Shattered Grid started to uh, arrive in the comic book stores. I had tweeted to Kyle Higgins uh, about congratulations and, and really looking forward to reading it or whatever. And uh, because of that, Kyle and I uh, struck up a sort of uh, online friendship. And then um, uh, at Power Morphicon in 2018, I want to say it was, um, Kyle had arranged to do a live read of the Shattered Grid comic book story. And he had managed to get uh, quite a number of us uh, to be involved with it. And that was the first time that uh, myself and Barbara Goodson, who was the voice of Rita on the show, were actually sitting, you know, uh, uh, on the same uh, panel and saying these lines to, to each other face to face, uh, you know, in over almost 30 years, you know, and, and that that live read that we did, which I think you can watch on YouTube these days, yeah. uh, uh, had such a, uh, uh, a wonderful response to it that uh, I believe the company that was uh, doing the uh, Shattered or, or the, uh, the fighting game uh, hired Kyle to sort of like help craft the story. And that's how they wove in the Shattered Grid elements. Mm -hmm. And then uh, Kyle... Uh, you know, he approached us and said, "Would you be willing to to come in and reread your lines for for the uh, for the show?" And I was like, "Yeah, of course I would." And so uh, I managed to fly out to L.A. and uh, was back in the booth. And uh, what I was very excited about was not only you know recreating uh, the character again, but I was also tapped to do the voice for the Blue Xenozoic Rangers. So Ooh. I actually got to be a Power Ranger and do the kiosks and, and uh, <laughs> fighting sounds and uh, 
So that was very exciting for me as well. So, so mm -hmm. power Let's go. that is awesome. You know, I'm not, I even, know that. I'm not even gonna <laughs> Neither lie. Did I. I'm like so shocked right now. Like, <laughs> wow. I, I just want to let you know, I love that voice. Like <laughs> you do not understand the power. That is. <laughs> yeah, that, that is amazing. Yes. Like, uh, I, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm, 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 I'm one of the thing I, I am very, uh, known for is being honest. So that's, that is one thing that you definitely stumped me on today was that I, I, I was full aware you were Zordon, obviously, but I guess I just did not see the part where Cenozoic Blue was also voiced by you as well. So <laughs> that is really cool. And like, speaking of that, you know, like you got to be a Power Ranger, like you Zordon is a warrior in the comics. Like that is part of the backstory. And, and also low key, it's, it's a little bit, um, not even a little bit, but it's definitely a part of the 2017 movie. Like you are the Red yeah. Ranger. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Front line, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> speaking of the movie, did you get a chance? Well, did yeah? Did you talk to Brian Cranston regarding the role? Did he uh, ask you for tips, or did you give him any advice at all? Yeah, he called me. Up. No, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no there, there, there would be no reason for Brian to reach out to me. I mean, he's he's a very competent, very. Um, uh, very uh very good uh actor so there, there would be no reason for him to, to to reach out to me i was very excited about them casting him because my chances of meeting him just jumped up over <laughs> because i was like man he could be at a power moment con and they'd be like hey here's what i'm doing uh so I, I i was very excited about it and and watching the movie and seeing that opening scene with him as the red ranger i was like oh Oh, nice. I get to be a Red Ranger. That's cool. And I also kind of like the fact that Zordon was a, uh, pretty much of a jerk. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the first half of that movie. Uh, and I thought, oh, that's, a, that's such a great twist on, on here's this character who is... Um, but, I, you know, I, I think there are elements of that that are uh, kind of present in, in the Day of the Dumpster episode where... Uh, I mean, he's, Zordon's not a jerk in, in, in the TV show. I mean, he was very supportive and, and stuff like that. But, you know, if you if you go back and you watch The Day of the Dumpster, Zordon doesn't just make them the Power Rangers. He gives them the choice. It's up to them mm -hmm. to choose to take on the mantle of the hero. And, you know, they reject him at the beginning. They walk out. And, you know, it's only when they are faced with... Uh, uh, that horde of putties that they decide to uh, try to be the heroes that they can be. And then Zordon is like, I knew you could do it and all that kind of stuff. So um, uh, it would have been fun if Brian had just, you know, found my phone number and called me out. That would have been awesome. But, uh, <laughs> no, no, that didn't happen. <laughs> uh, that, that can I ask, cool. while, we're, while we're talking about Dave Dunstan, can I ask a quick question? Sure. So what was uh, doing the pilot like? It's like I know a lot of people haven't seen the pilot, but Zorda did act a bit differently in the pilot. Well, I mean, it's uh, the Zordon scenes from the. Well, he was called Zoltar, right? It wasn't actually called Zoltar, Zoltar. Uh, which yeah. they had changed because of the movie Big, um, mm -hmm. uh, because the the fortune telling machine that that Tom Hanks' character in, in that movie is was called called Zoltar, but. Um, uh, the the lines and stuff for the Zordon scenes didn't change that much from the on aired pilot to the day of the dumpster that was actually shown on television. Um, the test audiences, I guess, felt like, you know, they couldn't identify with the character because um, if you've watched the unaired air to pilot, the visual effects that they have for Zordon turn him into like this big green blob of jello and, uh, <laughs> and you know, got eyes and stuff like that. But you really can't tell that it's me. And so I, I was very happy that they cleaned it all up and you can tell that it's my face and and mm -hmm. uh, uh, the, the filming of the pilot was very interesting because um, uh, all of those guys had gone through weeks of auditions and real uh, uh, physically trying uh, activities to try to win those roles. And I was brought in very close to the end of the filming for the pilot. Uh, and again, this sort of speaks to the sort of um, missed opportunity that they had with, they were just gonna throw this character in there and they didn't really spend a lot of time uh, 
honing the character or thinking about the backstory or or how all that stuff was going to they, they were just sort of like trying to get these episodes written as quickly as possible so that they could get into production and get the show shot and get it on the air and sort of that sort of thing um so uh I was brought in uh, to the audition and uh, won the role. And then the following week, I was in a warehouse in Studio City somewhere and had all my hair shaved off and was slathered with green latex paint and sat up against a green screen for about <laughs> four hours. Uh, all Most of the, the director and most of the crew were all sick at this point. So I was very separated from them, <laughs> very much like Zordon was. I was not anywhere wow. near anybody uh i could see the cast the whole original cast was there because they were feeding me the lines uh but they were all in shadow because of the bright lights that were shining in my face and um you know we we did like a number of takes of it and then we did a bunch of ad libs and facial expressions and i was there for like four hours four and a half hours total or something like that and then i left and uh at that point in time, the show had not been picked up yet. And the last mm. thing I heard from them was like, congratulations, you know, well, thanks for, for doing this. We'll give you a call if the show gets picked up. And I went, sure thing. And uh, I didn't expect to get the phone call because that's the way that Hollywood works. They film mm. so many different pilots a year and, you know, a very few of them get picked up. So three weeks later, when I did get the phone call saying, congratulations, the show's been picked up. And I was like, fantastic, great. When do I report to work? They were like, yeah, about that. Uh, we're just going to recycle the footage that we shot of you and we're just going to bring you in to do voices. So uh, uh, it was it was a little bit bittersweet because um, I d hadn't got a chance to know the cast during the audition. I hadn't really got a chance to know them during the filming. And then here I was not going to have a chance to actually meet them because we were never in the recording booth together. I was never on mm. set with them. And... Um, and the way things worked out, I mean, I left LA very shortly after the show went on the air. And so I never saw anybody from the show again for like almost 22 years. Wow. And, uh, the first time I went to Power Morphicon in 2014, and that was the first time that I, I saw David and Austin and Walter and Barbara and Kerrigan and all the people that I had worked with, uh, in 22 years. And didn't expect for them to recognize me, didn't expe expect for them to sort of welcome me, but it was it was like being welcomed back home. It was really, really great that they all knew who I was, they all knew, they all remembered me, and uh, it was very heartwarming to, to sort of be brought back into the family that way. That's awesome. I mean, that that's, cool. that, that's always a scare almost. It's like if you haven't seen, you know, people that you've worked with or, you know, you, you were working on something for so long and then you know, that is, that's definitely like, I'd be nervous if I'd be, if, if I was in your shoes for sure. Like, Oh, they, they, are they even going to recognize me? I'm, I'm just very, that makes me feel like there is hope in the world, <laughs> it, you know, that they, that they definitely opened you with, uh, had you, uh, you know, welcome with open arms and, and whatnot. That's, that's really good to know. Cause I was well, actually, Oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I mean, I was, I was really caught off guard by the size of the fandom because when I left the show, when I left uh, LA and went back to the East Coast, I really sort of forgot about it. I mean, it was just uh, a very interesting little story that I could tell people at parties. Oh yeah, I was on a kid's TV show and, and that sort of thing. Uh, and it wasn't until Facebook came along uh, that I, I started to get, uh, you know, weird random messages from strangers, you know, asking me if I was part of Congress and stuff. And in 2011, uh, I managed to uh, attend a small convention in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania called Tech a Showcon. And that was the first time that I actually sat on a stage in front of an audience of people and understood the impact that the show had and listened to stories uh, of people that uh, told me how important the character was and what it meant to them. and. You know, I, I really had to do a lot of homework at that point to figure out uh, how all this came about. You know, how long was the, you know, I was very surprised to learn that the show was still on the air. I was like, wow, really? Okay. <laughs> and uh, uh, that was where I, you know, I, I found out about uh, all the different seasons and uh, in space and 
uh, Countdown to Destruction and uh, uh, Zordon's End and and that sort of thing. And uh, from that point forward, I think I really made a conscious effort to try to be very respectful and to live up to uh, the what the fans see Zordon as and because uh, I, I, I think he's a great character I think he um, he means a lot to people and, and I, I try to keep that um, alive for them as, as much as I can so I'm, I'm very ha happy to uh, to talk to people about it and to uh, you know do the voice for them and and uh, just you know <laughs> make a connection with them and because I, I think that's really what it's all about so. absolutely yeah that's that is that is awesome that's great to hear and i mean speaking speaking on you know obviously we're, we're speaking heavily on the on the character of zordon like is there anything that you personally would would have would have liked to see different with zordon because I, I i remember you mentioning earlier in our conversation that uh, that you know he he wasn't like any of the other mentors and you and you compared him to like master splinter from the ninja turtles like you know like I know for me, it would have been really cool to see some some arc or something along the line where they are able to get him out of his you know time warp and and he regains his his body and and whatnot and we 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 can see him in action. Like is that is that something that you've ever thought about or anything along those lines? Um. Yeah, I mean, I've I've thought about it. I've considered it. Um, <laughs> but you know, when I look back at how the episodes were put together because um, uh, the Power Ranger show is is based off the Sentai, but the storylines and the characters are they don't they don't line up completely with the characters from the Sentai, right? Right. Uh, so if you if you've seen the Zoo Ranger uh, Sentai, you know that it's a, it's a little bit darker. There's there's some other elements that don't come into play as far as like the Power Rangers uh, mm -hmm. stuff. Yep. And uh, I really think the writers were uh, just thinking about Zordon as a, uh, as a way to deliver exposition of, you know, telling the Rangers, this is what you need to do and uh, how to solve it. And uh, because, um, There's not a whole lot of emotional range for Zordon's character. Mm -hmm. uh, you, t you take Brian Cranston's performance from the 2017 movie, and I think one of the the best choices that they made in that was that his face is able to move back and forth on the surface of the ship. Right. And because they had the motion capture technology, you can actually see, you know, the thoughts and emotions crossing his face. He, he he's he's present there do you know what i mean right he, he uh is communicating with them one-on-one -on -one, whereas the technology that that was available back in 1992 when we filmed was just sort of like this very simple chroma key green screen type thing so zordon is is a very sort of static uh very distant figure there there's not a whole lot of uh emotional range to him and the further that it goes along in the series, he becomes more and more static. He doesn't move very much. His his lips don't part. He, uh, it's just a voice uh, echoing out of the void. And so uh, I don't think that they really had planned to uh, explore anything with Zordon. I mean, they even tried to remove him uh, from the picture for a while. I mean, he and Alpha went back to Eltar for a while and he was gone. And there were a couple of other mentors that took over and then... Um, you know, they brought him back in space and he was just, you know, stuck in the tube as sort of like this hostage figure until Andros was able to to get into there and, and uh, you know, hear Zordon, you know, tell him, you know, you've got to do this. You know, it's your duty as a Power Ranger to do this kind of thing. So I, I don't think that they had uh, the foresight or the, um, the bandwidth, really, to sort of explore much about his character because to be honest i mean the character really i mean the show is all about the rangers it's about right. these uh these heroes who transform and uh try to fight off evil and zordon you know is a very 
Like I, I keep using the word static. He doesn't move. Um, <laughs> so it's, it's very difficult to try to um, do anything with that. And of, and of course, because there was no toy, because there was no, um, there was no reference from the Sentai to bring him outside of the tube, no character that they could e equate to him. Uh, that, that's, I think that's the main reason why he never left the tube. There was, there was no precedent in the Sentai for a character that would join the Zoo Ranger team and help them fight off Rita and stuff like that. So um, uh, I think they, they did the best that they could with what they had and uh, kind of wrote themselves into a corner really with the character because there's really not that much you can do with it. And which is why the comics are so great because they are showing that you know here's here's this character that had a body and had thoughts and emotions and um, ideas about how to uh, you know be a part of the morphing grid and, and all that stuff they, they they have such a greater range in the comics and I, I think that's exciting and <laughs> again I'm really you know keeping my fingers crossed that they turned it into an animated series so they can explore some of that stuff but you yes know, who knows mm -hmm. what they're gonna do but uh, yeah, yeah, we're we're really. Sorry, I'm rambling. I, I I should shut up some. But... No, please, like <laughs> no, we, no, we no, are, no. We are we literally absorbing everything that you're saying right now because it's again, it's definitely an honor to just speak with you about all this and like and see your perspective and understand you know the things that have you know basically just been happening and you know over all the years, especially with the character and and how they kind of treated it and it definitely is true that you can kind of tell just from the writing of the show in itself that they definitely really didn't have any plans for the character of zordon outside of just using him kind of like as a as a divisive figure um, i mean and, you look at uh, the first season and uh the green with evil uh story arc that introduces tommy and stuff zordon is not there in that arc i mean tommy <laughs> Tommy destroys the the uh, <laughs> the command center like in in episode one, and Zordon doesn't come back until episode. Five. It's like, That's true. Dang, you know uh, how easy it is, you know, to write the character out, and so you know he can't do anything. He can't help them, and uh, of course that that increases the drama level of it for the kids who are watching the show. But from from an actor standpoint, you're like going, man, I would have what a wasted opportunity. I mean, I could have done something, you know, but. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it is what it is, you know. So. And it's so crazy because you, have, as as you say that, you literally hook this same guy up with his White Ranger powers. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah, that's crazy. Well, I mean, that is that is that, that is super 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 cool to hear from you to to you know saying all these things and you know the the sentiment is definitely shared from us. You know, it's it's good it's good to know that both sides of the the tale are pretty much on the same side like you 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 and us both we definitely would love to see an animated uh story being brought to life and, and if they adapt it off the comic books and then, then you know it will definitely i we feel like we'll we'll just have it almost be like kind of like a resurgence of the the, the power Rangers franchise as a whole because um i definitely wanted to segue into asking you like what was what's your perspective on like you know power rangers past and present because it definitely had a big boom when it was brand new and then now yeah. over the years it seems to just kind of really sell off of the nostalgia factors i just wanted to get your your thoughts on that um well i think uh the the original power rangers show uh really captured lightning in a bottle uh in the in the fall of 93 when it aired um because it had so many elements that galvanized uh five six seven eight year old kids uh with this colorful diverse action-packed silly rated g with extra cheese kind of <laughs> show that packed so much into 22 minutes uh you know it, it was it was a freak of nature really i mean it was live action and it was 
cartoony and um and of course you know right away there was stuff that they could hold in their hands that would remind them day in and day out that this is real uh and and by real i mean uh, uh it wasn't something that they had to wait to watch uh you know I'm watching WandaVision right now, and um, mm. I'm very frustrated by the fact that I have to wait until next Friday for the next episode. <laughs> but back, back in 1993, after the first episode dropped, kids ran to KB Toys or Toys R Us or whatever, and they had a Red Ranger in their hands. So they could go out in the yard and they could recreate what they just saw, and it didn't feel like they had to wait seven days or 24 hours until the next episode it was right there with them so i think that was a factor to it and um i mean so it, it was sort of like a living thing for them and as time progressed and as technology got better and as more um like cgi and streaming and that sort of thing gets brought into it our attention spans are, uh, we're all sort of ADD these days as far as uh, this isn't holding my attention, I'll switch over and watch this. This is holding my attention, I'll, I'll switch over and do this. Right. So I think the the rapidity, the how, how fast everything happens these days um, kind of dilutes the nostalgia that some kids watching new seasons of Power Rangers uh, don't have that the uh, that the kids who remember the original uh, first season of Power Rangers have um, because I, if I if I remember correctly uh, the only medium that you had uh, at the beginning of Power Rangers was you had the VHS tapes you you could buy those and replay them. Uh, and then a couple of years later, there came the DVDs, and then after the DVDs came the Blu-rays, and then uh, the Blu-rays led to streaming. So, and of course, you know the big news over the last week or so, whatever, is that Power Rangers is no longer on Netflix. You can't stream mm. it. Oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Um, so, uh, you know, it, it's gone back to that sort of uh, oh, I have to wait a whole week until the new episodes come out. Uh, I think I'll just go back and watch the show that I remember or whatever. So uh, I think that has a lot to do with the fact that the nostalgia is very big because uh, of when it came out, the time it came out, the technology at the time, as opposed to nowadays when everything moves so fast and everything is uh, cleaner, uh, everything is uh, sharper. Um, and so you, you sort of have an expectation for things to look and feel better uh, from a television show these days, you know, whereas uh, back in 1993, you sort of had this sort of quaint little, oh, well, it, it looks kind of fake, but it also looks really cool. <laughs> <laughs> there's that there's that factor of it. And if, and if it doesn't have this sort of um, Marvel DC, uh, billion dollar budget kind of look to it, you, you kind of lose your attention right away. And um, uh, I mean, of course, these, these are just my thoughts. I mean, it, it, it's not saying that, you know, this is this is the, exactly the way it is. It's just hmm. how I perceive this kind of thing. And um, it's, it's very hard to, uh, because, uh, gosh, going on and on again um it's all right it's okay the, please the, the fan base for power rangers is is very diverse you have five-year-old kids and you have you know 35 year old kids some some kids are 40s or or whatever who who enjoy the show and the older you get the more sophisticated your taste gets right. and you, you sort of um uh what what entertained you at the age of five does not really hold up at the age of 35. Um, uh, you're you get bored easily you uh, you wish it could be a little bit different or yeah. you start to question well why did they make that choice why didn't they do this or why didn't they do that whereas like a five-year-old kid um, you know 
if there's a fart joke, that's the best <laughs> thing in the world to a five-year-old. Oh man, they made a fart noise. That is hilarious. And um, so, I mean, if you're 35 and you're watching the show and there's, you know, there's fart noise, you'd be like, well, nah, that's, that's kind of cheap. Why did they, why did they do that? Um, but, you know, you have to try to look at it as what it is and who it's being made for and why it's being made and, and that sort of thing. And um, it's, it's a difficult balance to try to keep something entertaining and relevant and um, at the top of the zeitgeist, you know what I mean? Uh, Definitely. If, I mean, there's, it, you know, plus you're competing with a thousand other things that are okay. screaming for everybody's attention. Absolutely. I mean, you, you definitely, you're, see, this is, this is why you are Zordon. <laughs> like you, you are, you are literally right. saying it how it is. And that's, and that's part of, you know, what we do here on Power Rangers, Power Rangers Academia is like, we, not only do we, you know, we, we do tier lists and we break things down, but we really like go into like the nitty gritty of why things are the way that they are and like you know we 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 take looks back and 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 really like you know kind of test our, our memories and like is this how we remember it or like how was it actually and like and and to to what you were saying about like how like your taste overall uh you know from from being a kid up into you know however old you are like now into like in today's time um you know, th obviously your taste will change and you'll, you'll, you'll ask, you know, you'll challenge and ask like, you know, why did they do certain things and whatnot? And the funny thing about that is some of those, some of the seasons around, you know, that the nineties, especially in early two thousands, they, they were written in a way where they were definitely made for, you know, us as kids back then, but even watching them, like rewatching them now, they still hold up like some of their stories and and even with Mighty Morphin I mean they, th that that had the longest run out of all of them obviously with like three seasons and then they even had you know I mean you can argue that you know they had an extension with the, you know the, the nine or ten episode Alien Ranger bridge into Zeo and you know from Zeo to Turbo you know the cast you know had its its changes but overall it was basically all within the same you know Zordon era um, and you know and with that like if you take a lot of the fluff out, which is obviously what, you know, kids back then uh, were, you know, all about, you know, some of those episodes, some of like the 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 quote unquote storyline kind of, you know, episodes like, you know, like you mentioned the uh, green with evil, like when things started to get serious, that's when, you know, that's when where the show kind of holds itself up. And then by the time you get to like space and you know, Lightspeed Rescue and, and Time Force even, you know, that's when you really start to see some of that 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 story um, it within each of those seasons, like kind of really show themselves off as like, hey, like this definitely is made for kids. But like, you know, as as adults, like we can go back and watch and be like, wow, like this is really good for its time. And and all it all it also goes, uh, you know, it, it, it goes into bringing up the fact that like the the shows that are produced now on Nickelodeon are just they just you know for our taste they're just not up to par even with some of the the ones that I mentioned just just off of the fact that the stories are you know they still hold up even being as old as they are and you know now you know obviously they have the advantage of you know the new technology and the flashiness and you know and how everything is you know produced now but you know, again, it's just, they're just, it's different. You know, they're definitely, they, I feel like now for the Nickelodeon era, it's it's almost like a callback in a sense to what you were talking about with, you know, Power Rangers really, you know, being how it was for kids and, you know, the, you know, the fart noises and whatnot. Like, it's very silly and goofy and, and you know, I'm sure kids today, they, 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 they're probably watching, you know, Samurai and, super mega force and beast morphers and 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 they're and they're in they're pro most likely enjoying it and then we're trying to find what's good out of them and we're just like man these kids just don't know like what they're missing out <laughs> <laughs> like, you know well, I mean, uh, 
I, I think uh, you know the the first couple of seasons of Power Rangers really um, they had they had a great source in the Sentai mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. Um, I, I think you know the Zoo Ranger show was was created for an older audience. It was created for uh, teenagers, uh, you know, uh, 14, mm-hmm. 15, 16 year olds. Uh, and so the the Zoo Ranger show has uh, a little bit of an edge to it. Uh, there's you know the whole Green Ranger arc in in that show is is you know a little bit dark, and and I think that they they leaned into that in the in the first season uh, with the introduction of Tommy because um, that that whole Green with Evil saga it, it can be a little dramatic for somebody who's six years old to see. <laughs> these heroes that they've been following for the you know the first couple of weeks or whatever suddenly you know get their butts handed to them and then they don't have their powers anymore and Zordon's gone and you know it looks like the bad guys are going to win that's 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 uh, you know real Grimm's fairy tale uh, cycle of the hero kind of stuff for a six year old to deal with but I, I you know I have to hand it. To the writers and the producers of the show who who said no i think kids can handle this uh you know because they're invested in these characters they want these characters to win they want the you know they want them to redeem tommy and to, and to bring him back and to triumph you know there's there's that journey that you have to take them on and uh i think they took a real chance with this uh five episode arc uh and, and some of the other, you know, two episode uh, little mini arcs that they had for in throughout the season where they understood that the, the kids were invested, they were going to watch, they were, they were going to understand more than what uh, their parents might think they would. And, um, and I think that's why it stuck with people for a long time was that as, as cheesy as the show was, uh, as, as goofy as some of the moments were, they really didn't talk down to you. Do you know what I mean? They they said, this is what it is. This is, uh, you know, sometimes life can get kind of scary. And yeah, it may be a, a crazy old woman, fl- you know, on a flying bike, but you know, that's, that's kind of scary. And uh, all you need to do is get together with your friends, stand up to it, and you know, you're gonna be okay. And, uh, I don't. I haven't watched any of the the latest seasons. I, I didn't get a chance to watch uh, any of the Beast Morpher stuff. Uh, I didn't, um, or the Ninja Steel stuff. I think the last uh, season that I uh, paid uh, got to, a chance to watch stuff was uh, Megaforce. Uh, mm. So um, I, I I can't speak to what the writing is like today or who they're writing it for or or whatever, but. Um, uh, and I think I think that's why, you know, older fans are really uh, gravitating towards the the comic books these days mm-hmm. because they're taking these characters that they grew up with and uh, writing them for for their current uh, position in life. Right? They're um, it's still Jason and Tommy and uh, Trini and Kimberly and Billy, but they're more for now. They're not for 1993. Right. So, um, uh, and you can, you know, the comics don't move, but the panels are so dynamic and the, the artists that they have working on those books are so talented that it really does leap off the page it's alive again and and so that's that's very cool very very cool yeah no nope. you 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 are music to our ears like i said like oh, yeah. this is beautiful this is awesome for you to for for you for it to to come out of out of you so we definitely appreciate that but to kind of, oh, I'm, I'm just making all this stuff up because I want to win the list. That, that's... <laughs> oh, no, no, listen, you're already, like I said, you're already at the top of the list, bar none. Like, that's there's, that's there's, here. There's, without question, yeah, there's plenty of reasons that we have on our on on our front to back up 
why so i don't think anyone's really gonna argue against zordon being in the s tier which is like the top of the top but um but yeah but not to you know take up too much of your time um, I don't know, man. That that Kruger guy. I mean, he's pretty tough. I mean, listen, <laughs> he, he's up there too. Yeah, don't get us wrong. He's definitely up there. He's there. <laughs> but you you gotta understand, man. Zordon set the bar. He he definitely exactly. he set the standard. Um, pretty much the blueprint and you know of what to expect of Named these. A bunch mentors. of stuff after himself. I mean, come on. And look, yeah. and this is this is this is real. <laughs> if it wasn't for your character, myself, Uchi, and Technique, we will have never have met. That's true. Yeah. That's very cool. That's, that's, true. that's the thing that that uh, I am trying to be the most respectful about is that we all come from different walks of life. We we all have um, mm. uh, our own paths to walk, and uh, you know we're we're from different areas of the country or different areas of the world, and and but at the same time we all have similarities. Uh, that we can all identify with and to be a part of something that brings people together and allows them to celebrate their similarities rather than their differences. That's something that I'm going to um, carry with me for the rest of my life uh, and uh, kind of allows me to sort of sleep better at night knowing that something I did one day almost 30 years ago touches people and and that I, I don't think I can you know think of any higher honor than to to know that um, I've made somebody's life just a little bit better um so i mean that's <laughs> i really can't find the words to express how grateful i am to people like yourself who take time out to explore this show to to keep it going and to hold it in in high regard uh to me that, that that's a huge honor and and anytime that i get the chance to speak about it or um to relate to people about it I, I i just want to take the time to say thank you for allowing me to be a part of your life uh and to uh you know just make our time here you know better so thank you thank you very much oh man you should be the one thanking you yes. you're the that's man that's beautiful man that's beautiful <laughs> you're, you're, you're the man you really you really, I mean, just talking personally, you really uh, touched my heart, man. And uh, yeah, it's just crazy. Right, right before the stream, I'm like, oh, this is really happening. Like, I would have never <laughs> thought. Like, this, this is, you know, I, I met you know other actors and stuff in person, right? But you know, you really are the one who gave us something to believe in because you're the one guiding these these characters that we all, you know, that we looked up to, right? Yeah. And again, it might sound cheesy, you know, but it's true. You gave me something to. Believe. And I, I am thank, I am grateful for you. I am grateful for that you took the role, and I'm grateful for you being Zordon. Yes. Like this, this right here, I can honestly say, I'm, I'm 29, and this is easily up there, top five mo best moments of my <laughs> life right now. Kid you not, this is awesome. Yes. I never would have thought this was gonna happen. I would have never yeah. imagined this gonna happen, ever, 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 ever. Yeah. Well, may the power protect. <laughs> oh yes. <laughs> <laughs> I was I, I was really going to ask like if there was any any favorite line or anything that you might want to throw out there for the stream but I I, I kind of I think you just you you have been reading my, off my questions before I even get to them, which kind of goes to show you that you you fit this role of Zordon like yes. perfectly so I can't can't thank you enough David I I really appreciate this David I have one question for you all yeah. right. This has no, no part. We talked a lot about Power Rangers. All right. But we, we have somebody in the chat you know, by the name of Omega Black. And Omega Black is a food guy. But I got to ask the greatest mentor himself, Zordon <laughs> himself. Goodness. It is Super Bowl Sunday after all. Flats or drums? I'm sorry. What? Flats <laughs> or drums? Which do you prefer for wings? I, 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 I can't. I didn't catch that. I'm sorry. <laughs> he, I think flats he... or, or drums for wings. Which do you flats prefer? Or drums? Yes. 
drums. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I answered it wrong. <laughs> oh, that's okay. No, you, you're right. You're right. Okay. Like, I had to ask. You're right. You both sound there, you know. That's <laughs> ass. It's okay though. It's okay. <laughs> so I, uh, I, you know, not to, not to definitely impose or take any more of your time, David. But, um, but yeah, if there, if there is any lasting takeaways that you might have gotten from Zordon or any any other favorite mentor characters from Power Rangers, or not even just from Power Rangers, from in general that you you may have taken a liking to before before we let you go. Um, definitely feel free to let us in on that, and you know, obviously a, a huge thank you again for you coming on and 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 can, can making more history for for us <laughs> here in, in the Power Rangers Battle of the Grid community and Power Rangers overall. So, well, I mean, uh, not not to hit something over the head, but I mean, um, the one thing that I, I've I've taken away from being a part of Power Rangers and and being the character of Zordon is that um, life life can get very complicated and um <clears throat> there are so many things that uh impact all of us um that we may not plan for or that um are are just sort of that might knock us off track or or move us in a different direction or um you know, disrupt what what we had sort of had planned for our lives or whatever. But um, I mean, I went out to Los Angeles to see if I couldn't make it in into uh, films and television, and uh, was there for a very short amount of time and met a lot of people that had been out there for ten or fifteen years. You know, doggedly trying to to get to be a part of of something like this, and here I was. I showed up, had been in LA for no more than two months and got an audition and got a part on a television show. And, um, you, you know, you, you never really know where your life is going to sort of push you or pull you or, or take you. And it, you, you sort of get to understand and appreciate, uh, the impact that you can have And, and how delicate that can be and, and, and how uh, if you have the chance, if, uh, you know, to sort of, how do I put this? Try, just try to be aware of, of how you impact people because you never know how things can change. You never know how um, something you might say might lift somebody up when they need it, even though they didn't tell you about it or, um, you know, just to be, uh, <laughs> this is going to sound super cheesy, just try to be a, a force for good, you know, to, um, to help rather than hinder people. And uh, this last year that we've had, <laughs> the four years leading up to that, I mean, we've mm. seen how difficult life can be when people make it difficult. And if you have the opportunity to lighten that load for somebody or to um, clear the highway a little bit, you should do that. And don't expect thanks. Don't expect uh, a pat on the back. Just do it because it's the right thing to do. And, <clears throat> you know, try to be content with that. Try to be content with... Um, being the best you that you can be, being the best Power Ranger that you can be. <laughs> that's that's what I think is what I'm all about. So uh, that's that. Nah, David, you uh, are. They, you, they, they, they couldn't. Wow. They couldn't have gotten a better person to play. <laughs> I swear. They, they I feel like it's it. the, I feel like it's the end of the episode. And I'm getting the the lesson. <laughs> in the fields right now david why you do this to us oh my gosh that was... in, in, my, in my tiny moments of arrogance i'm like yeah, yeah they picked the right guy yeah, yes. for sure they i couldn't even imagine it being anybody else no yeah but thank you thank you so much for for having me on thank you for giving me the opportunity to to, to be here and to talk to you guys and to help you uh with your stream and uh, you know 
be a part of the whole Power Ranger thing. That's cool. Yes, thank you as always for coming on. Um, and like I like I mentioned to you before, like you know, we have plenty of events coming up. Um, and in the future for Power Rangers Battle for the Grid and, and just in general for our streams. And, you know, you are always more than welcome, like at any point in time. Um, if you're ever tuning in or, you you know, you want to, uh, you know, give your, your two cents or, your, I mean, your Zordon, two dollars or something, anything like that, you know, like <laughs> if you, you are always welcome here. And you'll definitely always have a place in. You want, you want me to come on and drop some knowledge? Is that, is that what yes, you're... please. Yes, like, yes, you, yes, please, you yes. have the yes. wisdom. Like, <laughs> oh man, like yes, like yo I'll... yo. <laughs> I'd be I'd be more than happy to do it. Yeah. Thank you so much, David. Well, with that, guys, uh, that 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 will be it from Mr. David Fielding himself, aka Zordon, the mentor of of mentors. Um, you could definitely check him out um, at Twitter. I uh, I have a tweet where you could see exactly how his uh, his handle is spelled. And um, David, if you actually want to uh, plug anything of your own, I know you did mention that you're working on some writing. Uh, feel free to uh, let the let the stream know. Sure, uh, uh, I have a paranormal urban fantasy uh, called Glims. Uh, it's the first Lincoln Bright novel uh, that's out now. Uh, the second one is finished and should be published within the next couple of months. And I am deep into writing book three. Uh, so, uh, you know, at some point, you know, we can we can talk about writing and, and uh, story crafting and, and that sort of thing. But uh, uh, if you want to check it out, there's there's links on my Twitter and my Instagram. Um, I recently joined TikTok, so if you're on TikTok, I'm I'm out there too. Um, uh, but uh, again, I you know if if I have the time and I see and I see the questions, I always try to answer them, and I always try to take time out for for people when I can, how, however I can. Uh, and uh, again, I'm just so very grateful for all of you guys who who take the time out to create these sort of things and. Uh, Sort of make make my day better by reminding me that uh, there are good people out there and they're doing good and uh, that just brightens my day. So, thanks for everybody who's watching. Uh, and if you get a chance, teleport to the command center immediately. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that, thank, that really just happened. Oh, thank man. you so yeah. much, David. You have literally yeah. been for our first guest. I, I this is going to be really hard to top. I'm not even going to lie. Yeah. Right. Oh my goodness. Uh, David, real quick, what's exactly all your socials so people can follow you? Uh, on Twitter, I am uh, at David J. Fielding. On Instagram, I am DJ Fielding underscore Zordon. On TikTok, I think I'm David J. Fielding uh, or the real Zordon, uh, one of those. Uh, but yeah, uh, that's that's where folks can find me. Um, um, I don't always tweet about Power Ranger stuff on Twitter. I, I do get a little, uh, <laughs> how do I put it? Uh, I speak my mind on Twitter. I, I don't hold back on Twitter. Um, Fine, man. Uh, Instagram is is basically, uh, you know, 95% Power Ranger stuff. Uh, and TikTok, I'm just starting to learn. So I haven't really done much other than just sort of answer questions about my time on the show and how I, how I, worked on the show and how many different zordons there were and uh that sort of thing so yeah well definitely guys you heard the man himself that is david j fielding aka zordon and well you know what now that now that we're we're, we're signing off for you um we definitely got to get you on some battle for the grid commentary to 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 oh. So, so that would that would definitely be pretty exciting to see and to Jeez. hear actually. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I, I think that would be like Jason Bateman on uh, Dodgeball. That'd be very. Uh, <laughs> and 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 that kind of yeah. stuff people would love. I can tell you that <laughs> exactly. right now. That's all we need. Yes, that would be so godlike. All right, David. Well, thanks for coming along, and uh, hope you have a great rest of your day. And uh, may the power continue to protect you as well. What time is it, Ooch? It's morphin time. <laughs> yeah, so it's all the time. time. <laughs> hey, Ooh, perfect. Let's go. Thanks, guys. All right, thank you. Thank you. Thank you again.